Salve Regina, Mate Misericordiae, Vita Dulcedo, Et Spes Nostra Salve. A te clamamus, Exules Filiebe, A te suspiramus, Gementes et Lentes, In ac lacrimabus, Nostra, illos tuos, misericordes oculos, ad nos converte. Et ye, Iesu, benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exilium ostende. Good morning, everyone, and welcome on this Thursday of the fourth week of Easter. The first reading, taken from Acts of the Apostles, is part of chapter 13. It is an excellent Bible study. If you want to know how the Old Testament connects to Jesus, now, St. Paul is going to be asked to say a few words. Listen carefully to how he connects the dots. Now, this is going to be a series, and we're going to hear about this today. We're going to hear about chapter 13 tomorrow, and it's going to continue into Saturday's readings. But please note this, because it's very instructive for us and how we live our faith in the modern world. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear friends, let us call to mind our sin, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who restore human nature to yet greater dignity than at its beginnings, look upon the amazing mystery of your loving kindness and in those you have chosen to make new through the wonder of rebirth, may you preserve the gifts of your enduring grace and blessing. Through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. From Paphos, Paul and his companion set sail and arrived at Perga in Pamphylia. But John left them and returned to Jerusalem. They continued on from Perga and reached Antioch and Pisidia. On the Sabbath day, they entered into the synagogue and took their seats. 
After the reading of the law and the prophets, the synagogue officials sent word to them. My brothers, if one of you has a word of exhortation for the people, please speak. So Paul got up, motioned with his hand and said, fellow children of Israel, and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out, and for about 40 years, he put up with them in the desert. When he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them their land as an inheritance at the end of about 450 years. After these things, he provided judges up to Samuel the prophet. Then they asked for a king. God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man from the tribe of Benjamin for 40 years. Then he removed him and raised up David as their king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him, that my hand may always be always with him, and that my arm may, be, may make him strong. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and through my name shall his horn be exalted. He shall say of me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Christ, you are the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead. You have loved us and freed us from our sins by your blood. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had washed the disciples' feet, he said to them, Amen. Amen, I say to you, no slave is greater than his master, nor any messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you understand this, blessed are you if you do it. 
I am not speaking of all of you. I know those whom I have chosen, but so that the scripture might be fulfilled, the one who ate my food has raised his heel against me. From now on, I'm telling you before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe that I am. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever receives the one I send, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is a sample of what preaching would have looked like from St. Paul's style. He, he was a master at doing something, connecting the dots, showing how that history, that story, that, that passage over there relates here. He was great at being able to build a bridge to show people how they are part of salvation history a continuation of God's saving work. Fellow children, now listen to what he hits here. First, he hits the whole notion about the Exodus, how people were in slavery, and then they were led out of bondage and slavery, took a journey, 40 years, but they made that journey into the promised land that was prepared for them. But if you read what happens after they arrive in the promised land, they're a hot mess. And they follow the Lord, and then they waver, and then they fall off. And then they follow the Lord again because the Lord brings up and raises up judges, holy people who lead the people back to God. And so for another generation, they're fine, and then they drift away. God brings another judge. God brings another leader. God brings someone to bring them back on track. They fall away, they come back. They fall away, they come back. But then they cry for a king. So Paul talks about the kingship. The king Saul, he was then raised up and then removed, and King David, the mighty King David, whose line doesn't end, who will be filled in this person, Jesus. Bondage and slavery, the judges that brought the people back, the kingship that creates the dynasty by which the Messiah will be born, Jesus. And then he ends here that John the Baptist comes on the scene. I'm not even worthy to touch his sandals, John says. In all of this, what Paul is doing is showing how to these Jewish people in the synagogue, salvation history finds its fulfillment in Jesus. Paul knows his Bible literacy. He knows his story. He knows his history. And he's sharing it with them as it's fulfilled in Christ. And that's our takeaway. Folks, you realize that Paul couldn't do this unless he had some level of understanding of the scriptures. He couldn't do this unless he, he himself had studied and prayed and read and reflected. He took advantage of training, his own personal study, his time at prayer. And his example can inspire us because people continue to want to know about Jesus. They continue to want to know about what's this a big deal about. But you can't just talk about Jesus until you can talk about some of this context. How God has been working in our world through time and space, raising up people, leading them out of darkness and slavery, bringing them back into the light when they waver, and finally, in the fullness of time, bringing the Messiah, of which our legacy is the hope and life that we have because we follow Jesus Christ. And in following Christ, we are building on this foundation. We know our history so we can live in the present to build the future. For us then today, the takeaway is how well do we know our story? How well do we take time to grow in this faith we've been given? You realize that there are more resources now available to anybody who wants to follow Christ than ever before. You want books, you want podcasts, live streams, videos, blogs, websites. You want study guides or materials. You want to learn about the Bible in a year, the catechism in a year. You want to hear powerful, dynamic speakers who have been trained, who are eager to pass on the information. We have so many resources, and there's not enough time to even touch a tenth of them. 
But do we pick something to say, I want to grow closer to you, Lord? For those of you who come to Mass regularly, just listening to the scriptures over about a three-year cycle will hear well over 50% of the Bible. You realize that? Just by coming to daily Mass and Sunday Mass, we hear huge chunks of sacred scripture to raise our biblical literacy. Our daily prayer can be a powerful place where just a little bit each day we study something, reflect on something, learn something, listen to something, take time to do a little research on our own. There are so many tools. The invitation in the light of what St. Paul did was invite us to look at what's around us that we're interested in so we can articulate our faith, so we can explain it, so we can talk about it, so that when someone asks, hey, if anyone has a word, hey, I've got a question, hey, do you know much about this? Hey, you go to church. Hey, can you tell me why this is important? Hey, I can. Let's grab a cup of coffee. I'll happily talk about Jesus. And if I don't know the answer, I got resources. I can find it out for you and I'll get back to you and we'll have coffee next week. To be able to learn more about our faith so that we too can be ambassadors for Christ. Building a bridge. Showing people how their life, their story, their background ties into this great landscape of God's love over time. We can do that. We can help others by sharing what we've learned so that they can grow closer to Christ live their faith, and allow that faith to change their lives. God bless you all. Pray this day for the church. In a special way, I pray for all teachers and catechists who study the faith so they can pass it on. Kids, young adults, and people who are joining the church later in life that God will guide them to be good ambassadors for the story of faith. We pray to the Lord. I want to pray for all the people who've been making sacraments in this holy season of Easter. The people who came into the church at the Easter vigil, all the baptisms, all the first communions, and confirmation, which is tomorrow night, here in our own local community. For everybody who's entering into deeper relationships to the Lord and one another, we pray to the Lord. Pray for those who are sick. For those who are in need of healing. For those who are awaiting medical procedures, surgeries, and tests. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all of those who put food on our table. That in this spring season, planting can happen. And that things and crops will grow so that people will be nourished and fed. We pray to the Lord. For the intention of this Mass. Tom and Shirley Higgins. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And finally, for all of you who offer your prayers in the comment line. For all of us, for the prayers we now offer in silence. We pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, look kindly upon us. Hear the prayers we offer now, spoken and silent. We make them all in the name of Jesus, our Lord. O oh God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious, and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands it will become the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit, lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, it is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. And he gave the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, 
we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, James our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress and useless worry as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot, at this moment, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. A couple of announcements. So, first off, for those of you present, please just use caution when you're coming out. Again, the repair work that they've been doing to all of the rain gutters around the cathedral continues. Uh, they have to clean them out and then they have to seal them so that they're coated. Uh, wear and tear. It's, you know, it's part of the maintenance that we do to keep our cathedral looking beautiful. But just use caution when you head out today. 
You know, in the Eucharistic revival, this two-year cycle that the U.S. bishops have urged us to really grow deeper in the gift of the Eucharist, for those of you who come to daily Mass and take part in this, uh, to consider also being an ambassador to invite others to come with you. Maybe say, hey, you want to come? You want to walk over with me? You want to join me? You want to get coffee afterwards? But to be able to welcome people so they can come with us, so they can have a chance to hear the scriptures, receive a sacrament, pray with neighbors and friends. The gift of the Eucharist comes to us from Christ, and whenever we can invite others to grow in that, it's a great gift. I know many of you are watching from all over and around in different parts, not just here in our own area, but also to be able to say, whenever we can invite others, you know, we can do that by inviting people to watch something, but the sacraments are meant to be encountered personally. And certainly whenever we can do that, that's a gift. I pray that all of us can be attentive to those opportunities when we might be able to, like St. Paul, share our faith in a practical way here at Mass. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a great day.